Tonight I've entitled this message, Don't Worry, God is Able. And what I'd like to do is read a Psalm 105 with you, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to make some closing remarks. And so this particular uh, message tonight is more or less, I think, a, a reading time together. And so we'll begin in verse number 1. If you're able to follow along, Psalm 105, beginning with verse number 1. Give, O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him, sing songs unto him, talk ye of all his wondrous works. Glory ye his holy name, let the earth, the heart of them that rejoice, that seek the Lord, and seek, seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face evermore. Remember his marvelous works that he had done, wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O ye seed of Abraham, his servant, the children of Jacob, his chosen. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He hath remembered his covenant forever, the word which he hath commanded to a thousand generations, which covenant he made with Abraham and to his oath unto Isaac, and confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law and to Israel and for an everlasting covenant, saying unto thee will I give the land of Canaan a lot for your inheritance, when they were but a few men in number, yea, very few, and strangers in it, when they went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people, he suffered no man to do them wrong, yea, he reproved kings for their sakes, saying, Touch not mine anointed, and do my prophets no harm. Moreover, he called for a famine upon the land. He brake the whole staff of bread. He sent a man before them, even Joseph, before who was sold for a servant, whose feet they hurt with fetters, and he was laid in iron. Until the time that his word came, and the word of the Lord tried him, and the king sent and loosed him, even the ruler of the people, and let him go free. And he made him lord of his house, and ruler of all his substance, to bind his princesses at his pleasure, and to teach his senators wisdom. Israel also came into Egypt, and Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. And he increased his people greatly, and made them stronger than their enemies, and he turned their heart to hate his people, to deal subtly with his servants. He sent Moses his servant, and Aaron whom he had chosen. They showed his signs and among them, and wonders in the land of Ham. He sent darkness and made it dark, and it rebelled not against his word. He turned their waters into blood and slew their fish. Their land brought forth frogs in abundance, and the chambers of their kings. He spake, and there came diverse sorts of flies, lice in all their coasts and gave them hail for rain and flaming fire in their land. He smote their vines also on their fig trees, and brake the trees of their coast. He spake, and the locusts came, and the caterpillars, and, and that without number. And they did eat up all the herbs in the land, and devour the fruit of their ground. He smote also all the firstborn in their land, and the chief of all their strength. He brought them forth also with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble person among their tribes. Egypt was glad when they departed, for the fear of them fell upon them, and he spread a cloud for a covering and a fire to give light in the night. And the people asked, and he brought quails and satisfied them with the bread of heaven. He opened the rock, and the waters gushed out, and they ran in dry places like a river. For he remembered his holy promise in Abraham his servant, and he brought forth his people with joy, and his chosen with gladness, and gave them the lands of the heathen, and they inherited the labor of the people, that they might observe his statutes and keep his laws. Praise ye the Lord. Lord, thank you for your word, and thank you for the testimony of how you have taken care of your people throughout the ages. And I trust that, Lord, that your will be done now. Speak to our hearts. Thank you for your word. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. In Psalm 105, there are some key thoughts I want to share with you. First of all, if God is able, 
And we are reminded throughout the New Testament and in the book of Psalms to cast all our concern, all of our burdens, because God is going to sustain us. So I believe there's some wonderful truths here. I would encourage you to go back and study Psalm 105. We must not worry, and we shouldn't, rather because God is faithful. What is he faithful about? What is faithful God, the faithful God spoken of in Scripture? First of all, God is faithful to keep his word. In verses 8 and 9, he says, He hath remembered his covenant forever. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations, which covenant he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac. What could it be that God promised? We know he promised salvation, right? That's a given from Genesis 3.15 on through the New Testament. But we know there's an insight into the book of Luke. I'm not going to ask you to turn there. In Luke chapter number 1, in verse 72, it says, To perform the mercy promised to our fathers, this is a commentary, and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham, that he would grant unto us that being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear. Now, that's a promise that God made to Abraham and to his descendants. What is the promise? When you study this thing out, God led him to the land of Canaan, that is Abraham, and God provided salvation not only for him, but for all those that would believe. But God enabled his people to serve him without fear. You say, how is that possible with all the chaos and even with the persecution that a Christian can have or believer can have? Because if we recognize the God of heaven, the God that keeps his promises, he's now on board. The book of Hebrews chapter 13 reminds us, I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Someone rightly stated, faith in the Lord will take the fear out of the living. Let me say that again. Faith in the Lord will take the fear out of the living. You can trust in God and we can believe in him because God keeps his word. So don't live a life of worrying. Don't live a life of anxiety. Turn to the one that keeps his promises, keeps his covenant. Number two. God is also able to protect you. God is able to protect you. Now, there is a passage from verses 11 through 14. When you look at the life of Abraham, he started out from uh, Ur of Chaldees. And God led him about a thousand mile journey on uh, near the area of we would call Egypt in the land that was plenty and well watered. And it was during his journey that God changed his name, Abraham, Abram to Abraham and his wife, Sarai, to Sarah. And then he began to make his journey. And on his journey, he would meet men that were kings. This one particular king wanted to have a relationship with his wife. And in the end, God protected him and his wife. Look at verse 11. Saying unto thee, I will give thee the land of Canaan and the lot of your inheritance. This is speaking of Abraham and Sarah. When they were but a few men in number, yea, very few and strangers in it. When they went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people, he suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sakes. When you read the account mentioned in Genesis 12 about Abraham and Sarah, especially when they came into the presence of the king, God basically told them and spoke to the Pharaoh that he would take care of of his own. Pharaoh did not mess. Pharaoh did not harm Sarah or Abraham. I've learned this in my Christian life that if I am going to 
experience God's presence, I must learn to trust in Him. God is faithful. He has said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. The eyes of God are in every place. The Bible tells us that He can see us right where we are. If God permits anything in our life that is negative or even the point of suffering, it was allowed or permitted because God perhaps has a greater plan that we cannot see, yet we will have to trust Him. Like Job said, Though He slay me, yet will I trust in Him. So I take away from verse, verses 11 through 14 that God is able to protect you. God protected Abraham and Sarah. But here's point number three. God is not only able to keep His word, God is able to protect you, but God is able to orchestrate his purpose, and his plan. This is found in verses 16 through verse 25. I won't go through all of it, but there's several names mentioned here. One of them is Joseph. Now, what does Joseph in this Psalm 105 have to do anyway? Well, when God brought Abraham and Sarah to where they get, went from the land of Chaldees and went uh, through the land of Canaan in a sense and then ended up in Egypt. Now he's going to lead them backpedaling back this way. And as they were going forth, Abraham and Sarah met leaders, met kings. But later on, Abraham would die. And they would land, end up in the land of Midian. Remember that? And uh, they had a leader there named uh, Joseph that would arise on the scene and Joseph's descendants will be there. And there's a long story with Joseph. He was the one of the son, 12 sons of Jacob. Remember that? And he was betrayed as a, as a slave, by, betrayed by his brothers and sold as a slave. And God permitted that. God permitted Joseph to live apart from knowing his dad. And God was going to orchestrate for his people because he cares for his people and this is the big, one of the big overarching pictures of Scripture that God cares for His people. But God saw that Joseph would rest in Egypt with his people and Jacob before him. Now the leaders of the land would not be friendly to the people of Israel. Rather, they would build for Pharaoh and Ramses and they would have to labor with mud and straw and then later on with whatever they could to build whatever structure and it got very hard and there was a man that was born out of the lineage and there's another name not only Joseph but in verse 26 Moses Moses will be born and God will raise him up to become a deliverer God calls the famine God caused a fiery trial with Joseph. He went down to Egypt and God called, allowed Moses to be raised in that land, a type and picture of the deliverer or the Messiah. And I'm here to tell you that God is in control of his people in a sense and certainly the elements. We find in verses 26 and following that God orchestrated such events of suffering and trials in the land. Such tribulation, there was darkness, waters turning into blood, frogs and flies and lice and hail and flaming fire and locusts and caterpillars and the firstborn that died. And what was the purpose? Why all this? Because the pharaohs of the land held Israel as prisoners. Can you imagine being a prisoner? When I think of God and his people, God used Jacob, God used Joseph, and now God is going to use Moses to lead the people out of the bondage of Egypt. Egypt was glad to see Israel leave, which brings me to my last point. God not only orchestrated his purpose and plan, for Israel, but he works in our case. But lastly, God is able to provide. 
I would say on the hearts of a lot of people, especially during this so-called pandemic hour, is that how am I going to survive and much less outside of COVID-19, the pandemic, how are, we, how are we going to live in the future? How am I going to live? I'm so encouraged by this passage because if there were ever a people that may have asked that question, it had to be the children of Israel. Remember, even as Moses now, a foreman type of deliverer, saw the chariots coming, and what was before them? <laughs> the sea. And they thought they were all going to die. And God allowed them to what? Walk on dry land. And they crossed that river. Every day is a brand new day. We start something fresh and anew. How am I going to make it? If God is our Savior, we can take courage. We can take heart that He is with us. He has not forsaken us. Quickly, God provided grace for them. This is amazing. Look at verse 37. And He brought them forth also with silver and gold. And there was not one feeble person among their tribes. Can I translate that in today's vernacular? Out of all the people that were there, nobody got sick. God knows how to take care of us. In their case, one feeble person may have slowed the whole party down. And perhaps God is reminding us that there was grace abounding. I'm not saying that nobody didn't have a sniffle, but the idea is that someone was so weak they could not make it. God's grace is still sufficient. God not only allowed grace for them, but God provided shade. God provided uh, light. God provided meat. God provided bread. God provided water. Every time I hear a Dave Ramsey talk on YouTube, you know, at the top of his list, and we're talking about a guy that helps finances in the area of finance. Two things he mentions to all people that are struggling. Listen, the first priority on your list is if you got a roof over your head, you need to get some food. So that's a, always a concern. Not, not the satellite, not the cell phones, and all those things are important to a lot of people, but always about food. We don't read about any technology. We don't read about the latest sports car or the latest chariot. But what we do read is God fed them with manna. God allowed the rock to spring forth and bring forth water. And God brought quail, uh, quail down so they could eat. And God protected them from the heat of the sun by a pillar of cloud and, and a light by night. You could ask for anything better than that because God can provide. Paul said in, in the book of Philippians, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. Lastly, and in closing, if God is able to provide for the children of Israel, I ask you tonight, do you believe that God can take care of you? I believe God can take care of us. I believe God wants to demonstrate to us. I believe God is the God of grace. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God can make a way when it seems like there's no other way. Four things in closing. If God is able, if we shouldn't worry. I'm not saying you're never going to worry, but... It shouldn't burden a sound because there's a Savior that's in control. Rather, we should trust in Him. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean on Him to thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge Him and He shall direct thy paths. At the beginning of this chapter, there are four things here that the psalmist brings out to us. First of all, give Him thanks for what He has done for you. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. You know, I remember as an early Christian, in my early Christian years, when testimony time was very new to me, how I was invited to a prayer meeting or even a circle in a Bible study, and the leader of the Bible study would say, do you have anything to give thanks to God for? And some older Christian in the crowd said something like this, Yes, and he called the brother's name out. I not only want to thank God for what he has done for me, but I want to take a moment to thank God for what he's going to do 
You know, so often we struggle in thanking God for what he has done. And that's a lot right there because it's easy to forget. But I wonder when was the last time we thanked God and really meant it. Lord, I just want to thank you for what you're going to do up ahead because I know you're faithful. I know you're true to your people and you're no respect to a person. I'm a child of God by faith in, in the Lord Jesus and I know you love me because John 3.16 tells us me so and on and on we could go. But we can thank God for him, give him thanks, not only for what he's going to do, but what he has done. Number two, sing unto him, make a joyful noise unto him. Verse two, sing unto him, sing psalms unto him. Talk ye of all his wondrous works. When we talk of his wondrous works, then we, we give God the glory. Number three, this is a must in the believer's life. Seek the Lord. Seek him in prayer. Seek him in his truth. Verse 3 says, Glory ye in his holy name. That will be the name which is above every name. Let it, the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Verse 4, Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face till you're 65. Seek his face till you graduate from high school. No, seek his face all the days of your life. And then lastly, remember... God has taken care of you. Verse 5, remember his marvelous works that he hath done. That's why I've encouraged Mount Taylor Baptist Church over the years to keep yourself a little journal. Keep yourself something you can write on. I have gobs and gobs of these I have written over and over in my Bible. It's nice to have a, just a regular journal where you maybe keep a prayer list. We've done that. And uh, just watch God. And when you feel like, Lord, I don't know how I'm going to make it. Open up the journal. Rehearse. And that's what the psalmist says. Remember what the Lord has done for you. You say, why? Because while we're still on this earth, things are going to happen that sometimes are out of our control. Things are going to take place that are somewhat uncomfortable so we can trust in God. Let's pray. Father, we praise you for the word of God tonight. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will continue to help us to lean on you and to be able to trust you each and every day. Lord, my, oh my, how you have taken care of Abraham and Sarah and Lord, how you took care of their descendants even when they started out small, just a few people, and how you took care of the, perhaps, as the historians say, millions crossing the Red Sea, or at least 500,000. And Lord, how you watched over them in the land of Egypt, though they incurred some hardness, and how, how you provided for them once they were free, and how not a single one of them was so weak that they couldn't make it. And Lord, thank you that you are able to provide and do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Now I ask that you help us, encourage your people. Lord, even this week and Lord, for this Sunday and this coming uh, fall and into the winter months, that God, that you would remind us that you're a very present help in the time of trouble, that your grace is sufficient that, Lord, that nothing is too hard for you to do. And, Lord, thank you that you're able to save unto the uttermost. Now, God, we ask that you continue to keep us safe. Give everyone's traveling mercies home. Bless our time this week. And, Lord, use us as you see fit. And we'll give you praise. In Christ's precious name, we do pray. Amen.